All right. Well, let's take a look at some examples of average rate of change. So in section 1.4 on page 107, we're looking at the homework problem number 54. Now, the way they state the problem, they say from A equals minus 2 to B equals 3. That's just a common way of saying, you know, the small x value, A, that's what they call A, the small x value, minus 2, and the large x value, B, 3, you know, the left and the right, the A and the B. But it's just the same thing as saying, you know, from x equals minus 2 to x equals 3, which is the notation I'm going to use. But it's all going to work the same way, because in order to compute the average rate of change, we're going to need the y values for each of the two x values. So we plug minus 2 in for x, 4 times minus 2 minus 9, and we get minus 8 minus 9, and that's minus 17. Now the y value for x equals 3, we get by plugging 3 in for x. So 4 times 3 minus 9, that's 12 minus 9, or 3. So our average rate of change is the y value when x equals 3, f of 3, minus the y value when x equals minus 2, f of minus 2. And then we divide that by the change in x's, the change from minus 2 to 3. So we do 3 minus a minus 2. And plugging in the values we got, we saw that f of 3 was 3, and f of minus 2 was minus 17. And we'll divide that by 3 minus a minus is just plus. So what we have is, again, minus a minus, this becomes 3 plus 17 over 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 plus 17 is 20. So we have 20 over 5, and 20 over 5 is just 4. So we have a slope of 4 as our average rate of change. Which makes sense because what we were dealing with was just a line. And the slope of this line is 4. So if average rate of change is supposed to generalize slope, it should still be the same, it should be the same thing as slope for lines, which is exactly what we just showed. That if we compute the average rate of change of a line, we get the same thing as the slope of the line. So this is a good generalization. Now let's look at 56. So on 56, the function we're given is h of x, and the book defines it to be 2 minus x squared and we're supposed to compute the average rate of change over the interval where x goes from 3 to 4. So to get the average rate of change, we're going to need to find the y values when x is 3 and when x is 4. So we'll need to plug in x equals 3 and then we'll plug in x equals 4. So 2 minus 3 squared, that's 2 minus 9, or minus 7. So that's the y value when x is 3. 
when x is 4, we get 2 minus 4 squared. And 4 squared is 16. And 2 minus 16 is minus 14. So what we're looking for is the slope between the point 3 minus 7 and the point 4 minus 14. So that slope is going to be h of 4 minus h of 3 divided by the difference of the x values, 4 minus 3. And this is just a fancy way of writing. Take the difference of y's, minus 14 minus a minus 7, and then divide by the difference in x's, 4 minus 3. And so we get minus 14 plus 7 divided by 4 minus 3 is 1. Dividing by 1 does nothing. So what we get is just minus 14 plus 7. And minus 14 plus 7 is just minus 7. So our answer is that we have a slope of minus 7 between these two points, or that the average rate of change of h with respect to x over this interval is minus 7.